all of you are one energy. You are all aspects of yourselves. You are all aspects of the Christ consciousness separating itself from itself to have an illusion of a human experience. Mm, so in our perception, it would be that you are all God experiencing God differently. It is all one energy. This is what we refer to as the Christ consciousness. Today, I'd like to welcome Tara Arnold to the show. Welcome, Tara. It's such an honor and a pleasure to have you here with me today. Hi, Christina. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited. I've seen you on your own YouTube channel, and I've seen you on other podcasts, and I'm just super excited to learn a little bit more about your journey and also to talk to St. Germain, if that is what's in store for us today. So how about we get started with whatever you feel inclined to share about your journey before and into how channeling un unraveled for you? Well, um, as a child, I had you know, some messages from spirit guides. And like many others, you kind of tuck it away. It can, becomes normal as a child. And you don't really see it as anything that's really different. It's just, except for the messages is just at the time I knew like kind of not to share them. And um, they, a lot of times they were just personal messages, like to prevent me from danger of um, getting harmed physically or um, before something big emotionally, like if my, my, my grandmother's going to pass away, they told me beforehand, um, I think just cause I was such a sensitive child and then, you know, going into the teenage years, you kind of forget about it and you get caught up and with your friends and social aspect. And then anybody who's empathic would know that, um, the addictions from the lower chakras there, uh, from feeling so much. So I always say that addict, any kind of addictions are coming from, um, a lot of creative energy. So anybody who has a lot of creative energy, if you're not using it to create something uh, constructive, then you'll turn to addiction. So I, you know, I, I partied a lot and had a few um, vices, I'd say. And then as I went into my 20s, I started um, going to school to take nursing. And as I was taking my nursing courses, um, I, I was starting to get back into a little bit of the spirituality. It's It was coming up and then I put it away again and continued on my path of, you know, partying and having a good time. And then I had an injury in nursing. So that led me to um, find a way to heal myself. So I went into natural therapy and then when I started taking all these energy healing courses and that kind of opened everything up again, I started to receive a lot of messages and I started, you know, channeling artwork. And so that kind of calmed that addiction side because I was starting to create and I was starting to give messages to clients when they would come in for natural therapy treatments and at first I was so nervous to give any messages, but then the spirit guides kind of pulled back my clients and I'm like, why am I not getting clients? And they're like, well, you won't give our messages. And uh, so we won't send them unless you're going to give them. And I was like, well, how do I know they're open to receiving? Because I was so scared of um, being raised in a religion, like Catholic religion. I was so scared of what people would think. And then they just said, well, we won't give them if they're not ready to receive. So I would get a client that was open to receiving. They would give me messages. I would give it to them. And then maybe the next client, there would be nothing because they weren't open to receiving. So then I felt comfortable and started giving messages that way. And then it was like conscious channeling. And at first it was like, um, Jesus and mother Mary. And like, cause I was raised Catholic. We, we create, our spirit guides based on where we're vibrating at our belief system, what we feel safe with. 
So we pick our spirit guides, like we pick our friends on planet earth. So those are the ones I connected with. And those are the ones I was receiving messages and they would come in to do the healing work with me. And then one day St. Germain came in and said, this is how I'm going to be working with you. So St. Germain's the one that I channel the most and I consciously channel him and I also trans channel him. Um, and then the other ascended masters come in at the same time. So they bring through frequencies of like divine light and love through my chakras to like the viewers. So like even today, when we go to channel, if you know, your viewers are open to receiving, they all they have to do is state they're open to receiving and they can receive the healing frequencies through the video. Uh, time doesn't matter. Space and distance doesn't matter as well. And you just state you're open to receiving and you might feel something in your chakra system. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I get started with channeling. Awesome. Thank you so much for painting that picture. I I do want to unravel the difference between trance channeling and conscious channeling. But before we go there, you mentioned the Catholic religion. And interestingly enough, I um, had an experience right before, well, it wasn't right. It was about a year before I got sober, but it was one of the times that I admitted that I actually had a problem. And um, in that vision, I saw Jesus, Buddha, and Mary. <laughs> and I'm curious, um, were you afraid based on your upbringing? And if so, like, how did that, how did you work through that? Uh, yes, I was extremely terrified of the Catholic religion, the upbringing, my parents, both my parents are very strict Catholics. And I got um, preached to a lot and warned about the dangers of, you know, evil spirits, or what they call false prophets, they would say, or the devil's gonna get in. And I mean, that, that was kind of like a, a big conversation um, in my childhood um, around, oh, there was many times that they would put fe try to put fear in me, but then I would receive messages at the same time of like from Jesus saying, oh no, it's all good. Like, you don't, you don't have to worry about anything. There's nothing fear-based. And then um, they were showing me, it's like what we think as the devil is in religion is actually the ego consciousness and the aspects of the ego and there was like three different aspects of the ego the id ego and super ego and so it's the super ego that will run the program of um a lot of like if people hear voices or um create like ghosts scary ghosts in the reality it's like the super ego is louder than your ego so the ego is like the decision maker like don't touch the hot stove you're gonna get burned and then the super ego says go ahead and touch it and see what happens so sometimes the ego will say oh you don't have to be afraid and then the super ego will say yes let's create lots of fear and so they're saying like anything, like all this religious fears of the devil and hell and everything is just fear-based um, energy from the ego consciousness. The super ego is just louder and it's making you fear things. And then when you fear things, you create from where you're vibrating at. So if you're vibrating in fear, you'll channel fear. So everybody's always channeling all the time. They're either channeling the ego consciousness, which is fear-based, or they're channeling the Christ consciousness, which is divine love. And so 99.9% .9 of us at all times are channeling the ego consciousness because that's the game we're in. We're in a third dimension reality with the ego consciousness. So as my parents and the priests and everyone were trying to put fear into me, the spirit guides were showing me this. They're just like, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of. The devil is just part of the ego consciousness. So you can believe that. And then you'll just create fear-based energies reflecting back to you. So you'll create that scary ghost standing beside your bed or you can channel from your heart and there's only divine love. There's no fear there. There's no judgment. And then you'll create messages from there. So 
um, yeah, I was just guided to not fall into that because I was preached to a lot. I was taken aside and, and just saying like, don't, don't collect rocks. Rocks are dangerous. Don't collect crystals. Crystals are dangerous. Don't look into witchcraft. That's dangerous. Don't, you know, do this. God's gonna, you know, these false prophets are going to get you and God's going to punish you. And so, yeah, I just decided not to listen to that, but, um, I think that there's so many people, it's like the structures of the religious systems that they have to break down because we're also, you know, placing our spirit places in these homes. Our spirit chooses our life here on planet earth. Um, perfectly. They choose the home that we will actually have the most spiritual growth. So in order to expand our consciousness, the, um, you know, we'll pick difficult situations so that we can transmute it. So maybe I had a lot of life past lifetimes where, you know, I did have a illusion of a possession or I did have, you know, get in trouble by the church or something. So I created a life here where I could transmute those emotions. So not to judge them as well. So I don't judge my childhood. I don't judge my parents. I just don't buy into it. And I transmute whatever you know, fears are coming up around religion. Thank you so much for that. I know that a lot of what I hear collectively through a lot of the people I interview is that it is how we, we meet each challenge. And when we're meeting it with love, then that's when we transmute it. So I am curious how, how it is for you now with, with your parents and your family and people from, from your upbringing, are they accepting of you or do you just not talk about it? What is that part of your world like? Well, when I went to channel, I wanted to make a YouTube channel and there was a lot of blocks because of my fears of what my family would think. And they didn't really know that I channeled. I didn't tell them that I channel like, um, that's not their belief system and it, you know, they, it would upset them. Um, I told them a little bit that, you know, sometimes I'll receive messages from Jesus, uh, when I was doing my healing work and, and that was fine. But then when I get into this channeling and trans channeling, um, I went to tell them and my spirit guides are like, stop sharing your story because you're here to expand your consciousness and show your light. And everybody in your third dimension reality is placed there to put out your light. And every time you share your story with them, you're inviting them in to judge it, criticize it and try to destroy it. So you can put it out there and just hand it over to God, hand it over to the universe. So I'm like, oh, I'll start a YouTube channel. And if God wants my parents and my family and my childhood, you know, friends and family that I grew up with, if they, if God wants them to see my YouTube channel, then they will. And so far there's just been a couple, like my brother-in-law found my YouTube channel and he was quite upset about it. Like he was, angry he you know he he was mad that I was humiliating the family name like because I'm, I'm I've, I have his name his last name <laughs> and uh yeah and he he told his mother and so my mother-in-law was kind of um you know my husband was raised as the same catholic belief so she was a little upset about it at first but then now she kind of accepts it she just wouldn't look at my youtube channel i don't think so um and then other than that nobody's really said anything and i just don't share it if god wants them to know he'll tell them but it's not i don't really care what people think um because my inner child's having a lot of fun with it and if we're just creating so it's like you create it and you put it out to the universe. And if God wants, you know, people to know, then they'll send the people and whoever it is, will see it. And whoever, you know, doesn't, doesn't. So I yeah. I love that, you know, just give it over to God and you don't have to go tell everyone <laughs> what you're doing or why you just create and 
and allow God to guide the people who are supposed to see it for, for whatever their purpose or their learning is. So thank you so much for that. Now you did mention <laughs> trans channeling <laughs> and conscious channeling. So can you educate us on what the difference is? Yeah. So conscious channeling is receiving messages when you're conscious, like you have your eyes open, they bring in messages through your five senses. So you might see something in your third eye. You might smell things, taste things, feel things, feel emotions in the chakras. They might bring in messages um, in like using any of the five senses, but also they bring in like light language into the crown chakra and then you translate it into English. That's how the channeling works. And like I said, we're all channeling all the time. When we start to channel from the ego, we are sitting there talking to somebody and then whatever we're talking about. So say that, you know, I saw a ghost in my room and it scared me. As soon as you start talking about it, you start channeling everybody on the planet, all their fears and thoughts that are out there that match that vibration of fear of ghosts, you're going to start channeling that in and the story gets, you know, more animated. So if you're channeling something and you feel angry, you'll notice by the end of your story, you're even more angry because you start to tap in and it's like a snowball effect. You're just channeling in more frequencies of anger that match that. So it's, um, or you channel in the fear of the ghost and it gets this, you know, the fear gets more and then you'll create more fear-based ghosts. Like, so when you're consciously channeling the divine, I just put the intention to connect with my spirit guides. I always have to ground first. So it's just a visualization to ground. And then I command that because when we command, we evoke the God within us to create our reality. We're all the creators there's a lot of us awakening to remembering that everything's one energy. And so, you know, we are our spirit guides. They are us. It's like, we just sometimes like to put a personality with them to like we do with friends on planet earth. Like, so you can channel and receive messages from the universe without an identity, without a gender, without a personality, or, um, you can channel spirit guides that have personalities. So it's up to you where you want to play. Um, like Eckhart Tolle, he brings in information from the universe. He doesn't put a name to it. Um, so I, I just, my, my inner child likes friends. So we bring in the ascended masters and channel from there. So consciously channeling, it just, the thoughts, it comes in sort of as thoughts and they just drop into the head and then you, um, speak them so when you go into trance the only difference that I notice in the way I trans channel is I'm a conscious trans channel so I'm deep in trance while I'm still conscious so there's like two aspects of me one that goes into trance and translates the messages that they're bringing through with the light language and there's another aspect of me that might be asking them what they just talked about or um, daydreaming or going into a past lifetime. So the difference between the conscious channeling and trans channeling is that the trans channeling comes in faster and more precise and you feel their personality of whoever you're channeling and they'll move your hands and they'll move your body because a lot of times, especially with Ascended Masters, I find like they're telling me we have to move the body to move the frequencies. So if they're, I might be trans channeling St. Germain and he's bringing through a message and I'm off daydreaming or asking him a question about it. And as I'm channeling, Jesus might come in and say, hi, I'm just bringing through frequencies for the heart chakra. And then I'll see like green light and I'll feel frequencies coming through my heart chakra and then he'll leave and then mother mary might come in and say oh i'm bringing through frequencies for the sacral chakra and she'll bring in frequencies and then leave all at the same time i'm still trans channeling um saint germain's messages so it's 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 like it comes in like lightning it's a very very fast and the spirit likes to put all the puzzle pieces together so as they're bringing in light language your brain your eyes are looking around your brain to grab the words to match their light language. And then you 
translate it into English. So based on your education, your upbringing, that's the words that you'll grab to match their frequencies. If you grab the wrong word, they'll back you up. They'll say, could you choose another word? So if I say the word good, they'll say, well, you know, if you have a thousand people, they'll all have a different perception of the word good. Could you use like, please use the word magnificent sort of thing. And then it'll be resonate more. They don't say please, but they say like, grab another word. And then my brain will grab like great or magnificent. And they'll say, oh, okay, that resonates better with your viewers. So it comes in quite fast and the spirit likes to put the puzzle pieces together. They still use all the five senses while you're in trance. Um, and it's, it's like building a puzzle. And I like trance channeling better because it's uh, super fast. Like it's, it's like lightning coming in and it, the spirit has a lot of fun. Yeah. And how does it, uh, how does it affect you? Like, when you're trans channeling, uh, <clears throat> do you get drained? Do you get energized? Uh, what is the the result for for you specifically when that happens? Especially when um, they bring in, you know, uh, frequencies for different chakras. What is that like for you? <laughs> well, that's a great question. At the beginning, it's very heavy because you've got to adjust to their frequency. So your physical body. Your physical body has is consciousness as well, but your physical body is vibrating very densely. So you can have this um, illusion of being solid on planet Earth because um, everything's frequency. So when they bring in a drop of their frequencies, they bring in a drop and it blends into your auric field. This the spirit guides don't fully overtake your body. They don't come into the physical body. They blend into the auric field and it's like a dance. So your spirit and their spirit start to blend frequencies together in within your auric fields. So the physical body has to adjust to the frequencies that the ascended masters bring in. So they bring in a drop of their frequencies and then the physical body says, oh, I don't recognize that light. It is too expanded in its consciousness so then it feels heavy while your physical body adjusts to it and then it gets lighter so after you practice channeling so much eventually it just feels really light so now I feel um it actually gives me energy when I channel I'll be exhausted and then I will channel for a few minutes and it's like it wakes you right up you feel great because all this divine light just pours into your heart and it gives the whole body energy so yeah it's quite fun yeah awesome thank you so much for that I I know that um like this kind of feels like an out of left field kind of question but it was something that I I saw you speak about on another podcast and I would love for you to um speak about it now whether it's you or if it's um channeled what I what I had seen you talk about was um light workers and you had talked about them in in waves like in third waves and mm -hmm. how it relates to a collective awakening I would love it if you could elaborate or speak about that and share with us more on this these waves and the collective awakening Sure, sure. So you're located in the US. So I'll use a US uh, analogy. So St. Germain's just bringing in so he's showing me that there's everybody on the planet is a light worker because we're all from the divine light. And we just forgot. So we all put on this human body and we play this, this game on planet Earth. And when we come, um, the whole part point of the game is to um, get back to the light but it's the journey you know that we have fun doing so there's the whole planet would like to awaken right now and mother earth has starting to awaken so it's moving us from a third dimension reality into a fifth dimension reality and the third dimension reality um to a fifth dimension reality it's not 
a place we're going it's a state of consciousness so it's a, a perception and your, your state of consciousness changes your perception changes so in 3d we see everything in two ways it's like black and white you know and then um there's always like two solutions to every problem sort of thing but in fifth dimension there's like a third way a fourth way a fifth way a sixth way and all this magic starts showing up so a lot of us that are here on planet earth are from the first wave so the first wave of light workers so they show me they divide the planet up into three waves and the reason being is because um the first wave when they come and they anchor the light on the planet they're transmuting all the deep dense dark energies like a lot of prejudice or a lot of anger and hate and rage and control and all the structures of like this like the all the systems like the school system the religious system the government systems like everything's crumbling right now so the first wave of light workers came and they anchored a frequency so they just bring it within them within your physical um it, within the center of your physical heart you bring the christ consciousness aspects with you so the first wave light workers are like okay i'll bring these frequencies and they're placed all on planet earth and it's it's he shows me a, like geometric form of like being placed all the same distance apart like all over the planet so what happens is if you're in a school you you might have like it's like a radius of like say 300 kilometers or so and you're placed in the school and everybody in your elementary school doesn't recognize your light because they're like oh she doesn't fit in you don't feel like you fit in because you're a different frequency you're anchoring a new light that they haven't seen yet but their spirit recognizes that light and they can start downloading from you so you would notice if you're a first wave light worker that you might not have felt like you fit in ever anywhere and this is why it's because you were anchoring a new frequency of light and if you were the same frequency of everyone as everyone else then you would have felt like you fit in it was just because your frequency was different so first wave has brought these frequencies to planet earth and then there's second a second wave so second wave triggers first wave to awaken so we wouldn't have motivation to awaken unless we had these triggers and shatters to push us to go inside so we all put on this costume and then we get caught up in the ego and we play that ego game and like even I was talking earlier about how like I had addictions and all the stuff, it's because I was so deep in the ego game, but I needed motivation to get out of the ego game. So second wave helped trigger that, like I had injury at work or, you know, I had a lot of shatters of um, a lot of abuse and stuff. So that's that made me turn in and want something different. So second wave helped and third wave helped to trigger first wave to awaken and go in. Once first wave goes in um, and starts to awaken after so many years, second wave starts to awaken and then third wave triggers them to awaken. And then third wave uh, isn't planning on awakening because they're there to trigger the second and first wave. So the analogy I want to use, because you're in the U.S., it's like when uh, Donald Trump came into office, those who um, who voted for him were in like third wave. Those who got upset that he was in office were in second wave, and those who saw the gift in it were in first wave the ones that didn't judge it and knew that he was there to trigger the second wave to awaken so it's like you can kind of see how um the universe plans this beautiful orchestrated gift of having somebody like in leadership roles like trigger the collective so that they'll be forced to go in and look for something different because just with him being in office it uh, there's a lot of people that um, stopped looking outside themselves, stopped trusting the government systems, 
or, you know, the homeschooling of children or like so many systems. And with COVID, um, so many systems get changed. So now second wave is awakening because of that, because of COVID and our leadership, like people that are in leadership roles. Um, they're like, oh, I don't want to put up with that anymore. I'm motivated to change. Like there must be another way. And then they started to go in and seek another way and they began to awaken. So now they're getting triggered still by third wave. But um, yeah, the first wave light workers are like, oh, what a gift. He's going to, you know, trigger second wave to awaken. And, and it's all, it's all good. The universe is in perfect alignment. There's no judgment on it. There's no, you know, fear around anything. So yeah, that's my long explanation, I guess. I, I wasn't I expecting it to be so long. <clears throat> I love the explanation, though. And it's interesting that you used uh, Donald Trump as, you know, for the U.S. Because I remember around the the election, uh, I follow Matt Kahn. And he did a video that talked about, you know, it was Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. I, I think I don't pay attention to politics. So I think that was right. Right. Clear. And he said, now what's interesting is that whoever is elected is going to show us where we are collectively. Yes. Our consciousness. And he said that, you know, if Donald Trump is elected, it, we're going to be on a faster track. <laughs> Yes, yes, that's exactly it. It's like, <laughs> oh, good, things are going to get shaken up. Like, I remember I was like, oh, things are about to get exciting. And people are going to get, you know, really riled up. So yeah. yeah, yeah, it really caused a lot of changes within uh, people. People started to go in and said, I don't want this. I don't want to deal with, you know, yeah. other people controlling me. And so it's starting to break the systems. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, the systems are breaking. And um, also there's there's been a lot, at least from, you know, my view, there's been what appears to be more division and more separation. And I was curious because everything I teach, everything I do is all about joining, right? Joining in life right. and joining in union. And a big part of what I value and how I think we we do wake up and how we experience God is through relationship and it was a question that I wanted to ask you uh, or ask Saint Germain uh, what is the purpose of joining and relationships and why are they so important to us I'm gonna go into trance for this okay because um I'll just see what he says that's a great question thank you for it okay <laughs> Oh, yes. Welcome. I'm St. Germain. We welcome you. Oh, yes. Welcome. I'm St. Germain. We welcome you. We're showing our channel that the purpose of relationships is to awaken. It is to awaken. It is to expand one's consciousness. How would... A relationship expands one's consciousness, our channel is asking. We would say that it is by having a, a relationship, you can see a reflection of yourself. Everything is vibration. Everything is vibration on planet Earth. And your physical body is a vibrational frequency. Everything in front of you is a projection of where you're vibrating at. Everybody in your reality is a vibrational match to what you project in front of you. As you have relationships, this frequency is reflecting back to you, how a person treats you, how a person talks to you, how a person respects you is all a sign of where you're vibrating at. This is, the relationship is a monitor. It is, our channel cannot find the word. One moment, please. It is a scale or a beacon. Um, hmm, our channel cannot find the word. One moment, please. It measures where you're vibrating at. It is 
having these relationships to know what to change within yourself. Ah, I am coming down to planet earth and I will put on this human costume and I will forget who I am as consciousness. And I will play the game of the ego. I will come down to planet earth and put on my human costume and create friends and family in my reality to reflect back to me where I'm vibrating at. The point of the game is to get to the back to where you started. It is not about the end result you all know the end result you are all consciousness the point of the game is to enjoy the journey where am i vibrating at what does this even mean saint germain you keep saying where am i vibrating at and there are some that don't understand what this means we would say that it is we're showing our channel that it is all of you have come to planet earth and this is not your first rodeo. You have had many lifetimes on planet earth and within those lifetimes, you have played the game of the ego over and over and all the other lifetimes are happening now. Now all the lifetimes are happening now as time is not linear in our perspective. It is now stacked moments. And so in these other timelines, in a third dimension reality, your past lifetimes are are happening and we would say that when you are in these lifetimes you do not know your consciousness you have forgotten and so you do not have the power to transmute the frequencies within you the fear-based frequencies within you you are in a game of polarities you are in a game of contrast you are in a game of duality and it is transmuting the dark back to light or the fears back to love within each chakra system when you are playing the game on planet earth and you are in the other lifetimes you forget that you are consciousness and you do not have the power to transmute these dark frequencies back to light but now on planet earth everyone is awakening on the planet or everyone that has chosen to awaken on the planet is remembering who they are as consciousness and this gives them the power to transmute the dark back to light within themselves so the universe will set up relationships to show them where they're vibrating at we will give an example if someone knocks on the door and tara opens the door and they hand her flowers she will say in her head thank you for showing me i give gratitude for showing me where i'm vibrating at you gave me flowers and gave me a compliment this shows me that i am loving myself i'm connecting to my inner child and i am not criticizing myself today but if someone knocked on the door and tara opened it and they said you haven't fixed your step your step is broken and it needs to be fixed you are lazy then she would say thank you i give gratitude thank you for showing me where i'm vibrating at you were showing me that i have criticized myself a lot today and so i will begin to love myself i will go in and work with my inner child i will work with my higher self and give the one who feels unloved and disrespected and criticized i will give them love and transmute that dark back to light and therefore then when the doorbell rings i will open it and the person will shower me with love because i just changed it within myself it is a monitor everyone in your reality is a vibrational match how much are you loving yourself you have all mastered most of you have mastered how to love those outside of you you have had friends and family that you have given up everything to love to please to take care of to care for and yet the universe would like to be whole again and if you're not loving the god within you you're causing a separation it is like having a pie there is a pie and one of the pieces is you and if you're not going in to love that aspect of yourself, that piece of pie is missing and the universe cannot be one energy again. The universe is always striving to become one energy, to become one whole oneness again. Everything is one energy. But if you are not loving the God within you, it causes the separation. 
the key has always been you and everyone outside of you in your reality in your relationships is a reflection of whether you are loving the god within you or whether you are ignoring it or hating it or mistreating it or criticizing it or abusing it how many times a day do you criticize oneself how many times a day do you maybe drop something or in your perception make a mistake and you criticize yourself so if you drop the glass and it breaks did you not do it perfectly this is what we are saying if there was a way to break the glass you did it perfectly and uh we would say that if you break the glass perfectly this is a quote from matt Kahn. we're showing our channel uh then you break it perfectly then that is when you need the most love compliment yourself compliment need it the most this will then cause a reflection of that back to you i am loving myself even when someone in third dimension would think that i was making a mistake instead i will compliment myself if i spill the chips on the floor i will tell myself i did a good job spilling the chips on the floor that is when i require the most love by doing this and going in and working with your inner child the piece of the pie gets replaced and the universe can be whole again see everything as a reflection of yourselves why did i create these relationships there are many of you that are have created much abuse in your relationships this is a reflection of how you are abusing yourselves instead of getting angry when people mistreat you give it gratitude first and foremost give it gratitude and ask how is this a reflection of myself if somebody calls me a name how much did i criticize myself today use it as a monitor use it as a monitor to see where you're vibrating at all of you you are frequency everything on planet earth is frequency it is energy everyone in front of you in your hologram on planet earth is a projection of where you're vibrating at and that frequency is reflecting back to you use it as a monitor blessings yeah that was that was a good one <laughs> good Thank question <laughs> i have another question for saint germain <clears throat> and so the intention of this podcast is to deliver conversations and information that inspire others to to uh, help return them to a path that brings them back to the truth of who they are. So my question is, what is the truth of who we are? Okay, that's a great question. Oh, yes. Welcome. I'm St. Germain. We would say everyone's truth is different. There are not one truth. There is not one truth. There are many truths. It depends on where you're vibrating at. That is your truth in that moment. It does not matter whether you are vibrating in the ego consciousness or the heart centered Christ consciousness, whatever and wherever you are, that is your truth in that moment. There is no judgment on it from us, from our perspective, from our point of view what game you were in whether you were in the third dimension reality game and channeling from there and creating from there and vibrating there within your truth or whether you're in the heart center consciousness and vibrating there with your truth it is only the judgment that you put on yourselves about this that creates the disharmony and the chaos within your own reality stop judging oneself is the key we are showing our channel that as you're living your truth and you are getting upset at yourself for how maybe you messed up or how something didn't work out look at the attachments that you have to it about the attachments to the outcome and also Stop judging where you're vibrating at. 
you we we're showing our channel that many of you beat yourselves up because you go deep into the ego you slip and you say i'm going to be present today and do yoga and give love from my heart everywhere i go and then someone crashes into your car and you lose it and we would say this is when we would say not to judge oneself and that would get you back to the heart-centered vibration much faster but it is the judgment on yourself for slipping out of your christ consciousness truth into your ego consciousness truth it is the judgment that keeps you there longer accept fully allow everything and do not judge it resist nothing and not judge it resist nothing and allow everything do not judge it this is what we're showing our channel would get you back into the truth of the christ consciousness be present be in the now moment stay in the now moment find the consciousness within everything in the now moment and that will be your truth in fifth dimension if you go to the past or the future you are channeling your truth from third dimension but do not judge it and do not beat yourself up give gratitude to both you're playing both games uh everyone's truth is different there are many truths and your truth is where you're channeling at Everyone would channel from a different vibration based on their experiences, their upbringing, their past lifetimes, the physical body they've chosen, the blueprint they've chosen. Everyone is vibrating at a different rate at all times on planet Earth. We are showing our channel snowflakes. You are all not in shock or awe that the snowflakes are all have a different design and there's billions of them. But then you are judging that everyone's truth could be different. This is what we are saying. It is like you are all snowflakes. You are all vibrating in a different rate at different times. And so, so therefore, everyone's truth is different. If everyone on the planet looked at a painting and there's six, 7.9 billion people on the planet there would be 7.9 billion different perceptions of that one painting is it everyone's truth yes all of it is truth it is the truth from where they're vibrating at how they perceive that painting this is what we are saying it is where you're vibrating at is your truth and there are many truths uh blessings Oh, those are good analogies. Yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. So my next question is, uh, what is Christ consciousness? Okay. Oh, yes. Welcome. I am St. Germain. Oh, many people on planet Earth refer the, to this as the divine light one without judgment you've all created planet earth all of you are one energy you are all aspects of yourselves you are all aspects of the christ consciousness separating itself from itself to have an illusion of a human experience mm, so in our perception it would be that you are all God experiencing God differently. It is all one energy. This is what we refer to as the Christ consciousness. We use the word Christ consciousness because that is what our channel chooses to use when we bring in the frequency. But there are many names, source energy, the universe, God, Christ consciousness, the divine, and many religions have different names that they call this one energy. This one energy is always connected. It never separates. You are all having an illusion of separation, wearing your human costumes on planet Earth. But there is no separation. 
God separates itself from itself in order to have a human experience in this game on planet Earth, an illusion that you were separated from the divine. Because how do you know what you are if you have nothing to compare it to? When you are the Christ consciousness, it's static, stagnant. Oh, I will create games. I will create universes. I will create planets. I will create emotions. I will create duality, polarities. I will create the opposite of what I am. And I will create a planet Earth to come and play the polarity of that which I am. Planet Earth is a school in the universe and it is a grand school. It is going to the deepest darkness so that you know the greatest light. You do this by having your human experience of the dark to learn compassion. And then that compassion goes out to the universe. So if somebody pushes you on the playground, you will learn that level of pain. And therefore you will know the polarity of that in love. And you will learn compassion from that because you will understand how it felt to be hurt and pushed on the playground. When you experience the dark and transmute it within yourself, you expand your consciousness. This is the Christ consciousness within you that we are referring to. It makes your light bigger and more expanded and those around you can download from you this light, these light frequencies that you have transmuted. Within learning this compassion, you can give compassion to others. And so when you are older and you have a bigger heartbreak than being pushed on the playground, you will go to a deeper darkness. Maybe you will have a loved one pass away and this will cause a deep grief. Now you know the polarity of that in life, in light, by experiencing the depths of that darkness. Now you'll know the polarity of that and learn the compassion for that. And when you walk through a mall and there are people in the mall that have had the same grief and they're feeling lost, they can begin to download from your light the frequencies that you have transmuted within yourself when you healed your own pain. And then that compassion and love that they integrate and download from you goes out to all of the universe just as it does when you integrate it and transmute it within yourself it is about playing with frequencies you are all here to play with frequencies you're here to experience frequencies and the feeling and emotions behind these frequencies within these frequencies it is a game of frequencies you play your video games and have fun and we're showing our channel planet earth is like a video game and each level of the game you move to the next level but you do not not go backwards this is the same as christ consciousness that expands within you when you transmute the dark back to light within you within the ego consciousness and you transmute it back to light then that expands out and you become whole again with the universe it is the journey of getting back to the beginning it is a circle there is no beginning and no end it is a circle and so you put on your costume and you play the game and you play with frequencies and then you go back to what you already were the soul and the spirit the spirit is made up of fractals of light frequencies and all the experiences that you have in this light lifetime will get added to the soul and the soul holds all the lifetimes but in order to feel like this is individual your spirit causes a separation with the soul so that you can have what is appears to have an 
an individual experience on planet earth and then this lifetime gets added back to the soul and the soul carries all the information this is the akashic records And as you play the game over and over on planet Earth, each time you expand the Christ consciousness within you and it gets accelerated and expanded, we would not use the terminology bigger or better. We would say differently. It expands outwards or we would not use say outwards. We would say it expands more into the Christ consciousness and less of the ego consciousness and so for those of you who had heard the terminology ascended master they have played the game and got to the end and expanded the christ consciousness within them so that they are now back home they have gone full circle the whole point of the game is to go full circle it is not about racing to the end. You all know the end finish. Ah, oh, blessings. Oh, that was... <laughs> I forgot. I got daydreaming. Sometimes when you're in there too long, you'll start daydreaming. So I forgot I was channeling. So when I came out and then I saw you, it just kind of startles you for a second. Yeah. So, well, thank uh, you. Thank you so much for that. Yes. Um, Thank you, St. Germain, mm -hmm. for that. That was so awesome. How how do you feel you mentioned daydreaming? So <laughs> do you feel <laughs> dreamy or? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You kind of get like, it's like sleepy or something. I don't know. Mm, yeah, <laughs> it was, you were like swaying and it was like relaxing as I was listening. Yeah, was really they cool. were actually bringing in really different frequencies and kind of swaying me a little bit different. And I was asking them, because remember I said there's two aspects of myself. Uh -huh. So I was asking them with the other aspect, I was asking, I was like, why am I moving different? And they said, well, you're talking about Christ consciousness. We brought God in. So when God, like, it's like God energy comes in or the universe it's like the you'll see like the brightest light you've ever seen mm -hmm. and it always like moves you kind of in a circle but at the same time I was translating through Saint Germain so the circle was kind of like wobbly so it was just yeah. different <laughs> yeah it, it looked different. like a nice like just way kind of back yeah back. it felt yeah. really good it's really <laughs> delicious and that's why I started to like daydream because you get really relaxed and Mm. It just feels delicious. All you feel is Christ conscious, like divine light, and you feel really happy, but not ego happy. It's like divine yeah. happy. So it's different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> well this has been um so much fun I do have a couple of questions that I ask all my guests but before we go there is there anything else you want to share about something we have or may not have talked about today I'll just give a I can tap into your audience's frequency and just give a message from St. Yeah. Germain. So he just brought in a fly totem. So everybody can look up fly totem. Um, I just had a fly fly right and cross in front of me. So that's a part of the message. Um, because remember, everything in our reality is a reflection of where we're vibrating at. So spirit animal fly totem, if anybody's interested, they can look that up and see what the message is. And I'll just go into trance. So we just tap in in real time because times like folded space it's like everything's happening now so i just tap into your audience and just see where everybody's vibrating at and then we just channel a message based on where everyone's vibrating at oh yes welcome i am saint germain we are showing our channel emotions of the heart we are bringing through frequencies for the heart chakra at this time if you're open to receiving simply state you're open to receiving and we channel divine light through Terra chakras to the viewers. Uh, we are showing our channel, the heart chakra. One moment, please. Okay, so what he's doing is just kind of taking a read on everybody that be viewing this, and there's a lot in the heart. So then we're gonna we're gonna tap into what why that is. 
Oh, yes. Welcome. I'm St. Germain. We're showing our channel that there are many in the collective in deep grief. There are many in the collective with so much hate. And this is causing grief on the planet. Those of you who are awakening, those of you who are awakening are seeing many shatters on planet Earth. And some of the viewers are feeling hopeless and helpless because they're seeing everything as happening to them, not for them. This is what we wish to bring up today. It is everything is happening for you, not to you. If you are seeing everyone as struggling or suffering, then you will keep the victim vibration. But if you see everyone on planet Earth as having an experience, and that their soul is always perfect. Their soul cannot be harmed. Changing your perception to seeing them as having an experience rather than struggling or suffering gives you a vibration that will not keep them in victim. But if you see them as struggling and suffering, you keep them in victim. And all you have to offer them for support is victim. Instead, when it's happening for you or happening for somebody else, these shatters, these triggers, this abuse, this anger, hate on the planet, change it to seeing it through empathetic eyes rather than sympathetic eyes if you have sympathetic eyes you are saying i don't want you to be in pain or i don't want to be in pain myself and so i will take on somebody else's pain or i will keep myself in victim and struggling and suffering but if you see it in empathetic eyes you were saying i understand your pain and i can give you love from my heart and then you are offering them a frequency of divine love rather than a frequency of victim. And then they can start to download the divine love. We're showing our channel, this is within yourself as well. We are using both examples. When you are criticizing yourself or angry because you have a trigger or somebody hurt you or upset you in your perception, Remember, it is happening for you. What is the gift in this? Give it gratitude. What is the gift? Somebody was just very mean to me. They stole from me and betrayed me. What is the gift in this? How could I look at it with empathy for myself instead of anger at them? I will empathize with myself by not seeing myself as suffering or struggling or a victim. And then this gets you out of victim. And then you have the power to change your reality. But if you're seeing yourself as a victim, you will never have the power to change your reality. This is a game of frequencies. And in order to change the frequency back to love, back to abundance, in order to create a life that you desire where you are magic and magic shows up in every step and everywhere you look and everything is delicious, then you must get out of the state of victim. When you are in a state of victim, you cannot change it from there. You cannot change your reality in the state where you're vibrating from. It must be in the divine love. Get out of victim. Stay in the now moment and give gratitude. Ask, ask us. Ask the universe. You do not need Tara to channel. Ask us to show you. Show me more. Why am I creating this situation? When we drop in the answers, you'll have an aha moment. Oh, I created that person to betray me and steal from me because I stole from the teacher when I was in grade two and I'm still feeling guilty about it. I went into her purse and I took $2. And I have had carrying this guilt for all of these years. And so I created somebody in my reality to steal from me so that I would see the reflection of that in order to transmute that guilt back to love. We're saying and giving this example to show you that everything in your reality is a gift. 
what is the message? What is the gift? Ask and give gratitude. See that it is happening for you and not to you. And look at it with empathetic eyes, whether it is happening for you or for someone else. This will give you the power to change it. There is no struggling or suffering on planet Earth, except for in your perception. We see everything in perfect alignment, and you are all experiencing playing the game of duality, of polarities, of frequency. Ah, oh, this is a fun game for your spirit. It is your ego that is judging it as something wrong, and it is when your ego judges it that the pain begins. Ah, oh, you can have a life pain-free if you would stop judging it. This is with any illness or any shatter or triggers in your or abuse in your reality. It is by going in instead of out, by asking, what is it I'm not seeing? Show me. And the universe will show you why you've created that in your reality. And when you look at it in the eyes of empathy and not victim, then you will have the power to change it and your life will begin to get delicious. You will be able to create magic and abundance in your reality. It is all perception. Change your perception and change your life. Ah, oh, blessings. Okay. That was a long yeah. one too. <laughs> <clears throat> that was so amazing. Uh, thank you so much, Tara. It's well, thank you. Up. The first question that I ask all my guests is how would you define God? Everything. Yeah, because the ego consciousness is God too. So the dark is light that is forgotten, you know, or it's everything is is god so yeah everything everything and nothing <laughs> all at the same time <laughs> right <laughs> the second question is what would you say is the purpose of life uh, to experience frequency and play with frequency and just experience the different emotions and there's like a thousand emotions with a thousand different shades and it's experiencing all the shades of those each emotion that is that's what the spirit loves like you know if I tap in like when I tapped into your viewers I could feel all their grief but there was a lot of different frequencies of grief or I could feel anger hate and there's a lot of different frequencies so my spirit really enjoys feeling each frequency and then transmuting that so yeah. Thank you. Time I like frequency. how you describe that. <laughs> There's a thousand emotions, thousands of them with all different shades. That was so yeah. beautiful. <laughs> the final question is, if you could take one piece of wisdom that you have now and offer it to a younger version of yourself, what would that one piece of wisdom be? Um, Stop running. I just, because I'd run and then I would move away from all my problems and then I would just recreate the loop because I couldn't see the gift in it. So I didn't have the power to change it. So I ran from it and then I'd recreate a similar situation and then I'd get mad at that and I'd run again. I just kept moving and just saying, I don't want this life. I don't want this life until one day I was like, oh, all I have to do is stop judging it and see it as a gift and transmute it within myself. And then it stops showing up in my reality. I don't have to recreate the loop because I got the message. So I would recreate or I would transmute a lot sooner and uh, move a lot slower. Like I wouldn't, um, I would have been present. I would tell my <laughs> younger self be present and master this master this narcissist or the sociopath now mm -hmm. and you'll never create it again yeah. so the more that I transmute now my life's delicious I don't create all these narcissists or sociopaths coming into my life anymore because I've transmuted those that deep darkness within myself and now it's just delicious kind people just show up in my reality and I stop recreating that loop so that's what I would, the advice I'd give to my younger self is stop running, just do it. Like <laughs> just face your fears scared and yeah, transmute. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. How do people get in touch with you or where do they find you? 
Well, I have a YouTube channel. It is Tara Arnold is my handle on YouTube. So come join us there. We have um, messages from St. Germain and the Ascended Masters. And we also have live events. If anybody wants to come to a live channeling event, I have them about every six weeks or so. And they're via Zoom. And uh, I teach people how to channel. So that's on my website. And it's TaraArnoldArt.com. And yeah, I'd love to meet you. Come and make leave a comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd love to meet you. Awesome. I'll be sure to include all the links to your channel and your website in the description of this show. Tara, this has been so much fun. Like, <laughs> I know we've had some um, pauses and struggles getting this all recorded, but um, it has been such an honor and such a pleasure and I hope to have you back soon thank you so much for being you and for sharing your heart and your wisdom and for sharing Saint Germain and the Ascended Masters with the world and all of us it's been so much fun thank you again thank you yes there's a lot of gifts that came through today with uh, <laughs> the blocks that we had we saw them as gifts and we laughed and um, we had a really good time today. So I appreciate your um, disposition and your personality. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been a, it's been a joy. Yeah. Thank you so much. I would like to personally thank you for tuning in to this episode. If you haven't already, please be sure to like this episode, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so that you never miss a beat. And if you really resonated with this content, please share it with all of your friends so that collectively we can expand our consciousness. Have a very blessed week.